do you think this will be a setback in terms of like these players coming again? Because you know, if they lost today and it was a narrow one, you'd be like, you know what? There's another step next year. Even for Tipperary, psychologically, that like 16 point turnaround that you know that's yeah. that's going to be tough to overcome. Do you think these players can overcome it? It's go- I would think it's very difficult. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I was thinking back of kind of you know like 2003 when Cork came from nowhere, you know, slightly came from nowhere, obviously the strike, they had good players there, but a bit like this year, you know, we kind of had a couple of underachieving seasons, kind of came out, uh, flashed across the summer, lot, lots of swagger, but I suppose that year, Cork could look back and, you know, the big final words documentary in RT, great show, you know, Cork left all those frees behind and should have won the game, could have, would have, should have, whereas like, you can't look at a game like that and say, you know, and, and we're discussing where Cork could have improved and I do think they could have protected the backs a bit, you know, a bit better, or closed the space down, but ultimately, I mean, they were beaten everywhere. Yeah. You know, everywhere you're, st- you're doing player ratings and you're struggling to give anyone seven or eight out of ten, a handful of players, everyone else is four or five, really, if you're being honest, you know, because they were just beaten everywhere. So that is very, very demoralizing. But at the same time, there's a club comp- campaign to go back to. We do have those two underage All Ireland titles, you know, we'd have been delighted at the start of summer if you told us we could win the three of those and just get that kind of break those, you know, that curse going back at underage and being unable to win All Ireland. So there, there is a bit of positivity out there. But I mean, God, you're not going to be thinking about that for the next few days. But I'm sure when they kind of come back at the start of next year or over the winter when the club championship is over, like they did a lot of good things this summer. They do have a nucleus of a good team there. You know, the, the core of the team is solid. Um, and Limerick, listen, everyone's going to struggle to catch up with them at the moment. Unfortunately, you know, it's bleak, you know, you know but, but for Limerick fair play, they're absolutely flying at the moment you, know, you just have to take your hat off of them but, you know you thought at times they look vulnerable this summer and still they absolutely cruise to the other and you know same like the cruise to last winter's championship you know they, they just look unbeatable at the moment there is no unbeatable team but they really do look like the Kilkenny team in their pump you know they yeah. are physically and everything yeah plenty of comments in here um, just congrats to Limerick says it wasn't me I was hoping for a closer contest but Limerick are so far ahead of everyone else it's scary Danny Mack won too many fires for Cork to put out uh, chances today were based on tradition as in their Cork's chances were based on tradition of which this Limerick team have no respect for a bit of a sneery one here from the Shellminator with a tip uh avatar the rebels the rabble more like it uh kingston summed it up was like trying to hold out the tide with a bucket hard luck rebels not your day uh, do, you, do you see kieran kingston hanging around he's obviously had two sets of two years ah uh, yeah yeah and like, like he has a term for for next year you know and, and god i mean you know there'd be, there'd be no advantage to a fellow like kieran kingston walking away. i mean he's a great organizer you know he's got a very very good backroom team around him you know maybe they'll try and bring him one or two fresh voices it, it, it's hard to know, you know, on the day of losing an All Ireland festival, you underperform so badly, you know, you'd be saying, you'd just throw everyone out, you know what I mean, change half the team, you know, sack the management, you know, all these things people say. No, I, like, I mean, you know, Cork have made progress, they've had a good summer, it certainly doesn't look like it now, and it won't for a while till they probably reflect on the year. But I mean, they did win three kind of knockout games in a row, you know, a bit of luck maybe against Clare, but you know, they played a lot of good hurling. They're there, thereabouts, they do have the underage production line cranking in. I mean, you'd probably like to see us, you know, competing. You know, for another couple of under twenties over the next couple of years, because there's a lot of good miners coming out. You know, Jack Cunningham's own son, Ben Cunningham, is only 18 years of age, just turned 18, and he looks a cracking player as well, and it's been terrific in club games in Cork and stuff. So there, there's a lot of guys coming through, but I suppose there's no quick fix. You know, there, there's no quick fix. I mean, you know, you look at where Kyle Hayes was when he came out under John Kylie's first year, and he looked very raw, and all these guys look very raw. Even Ken Lynch at times looked like kind of a, you know, a player you'd carry. You know, a fancy showboaty player. I'm sure he's one of the best hurlers of the last forty years. No, he's evolved that way. So it, there, there isn't a quick fix. You know, there's patience is what it's about. So for Cork, they have to be patient. But it's it's, it's tough. You know, it's a depressing few days now for Cork, Cork people. You know, and it's unfortunate for the miners in twenties that this now takes so much of the luster off it for them. Particularly the miners who won on the same weekend. You know, because I mean they've kind of been overshadowed now by which is the grim nature of this defeat. But that. That, that sport, you know, there's no hiding place up here in Croke Park, not in Ireland, finally. Yeah, and as I think some of the iconic players of the last 10 or 12 years, like Joe Canning is retired, Brendan Maher is retired, Patrick Organ's 33, he'll be 34 during next summer's championship. He got a couple from play, a couple of nice scores, struggled to get into the game, and not, not really because of him, but because of like just Limerick's vice like grip on the game. Do you see him staying around? Is it important? He's staying, leaving Harnady, he's going to be 32 next year. He was probably Cork's best player by a mile, yeah, yeah, yeah. scored four. Like, it's interesting, like you come up to a final, and sometimes it's the experienced players who stand out for you, despite all the young lads yeah. being the ones that you're expecting. They're the reason that Cork are at another level again this year. But do you think Hoggy will stay around? Like Harry surely will. 
Yeah, oh, oh, there'd be no debate. I'd imagine Hoggy would be listening. Hoggy's a big Tom Brady fan, you know, mm. so there's a guy playing, you know, he's one of the bones of 10 years older than Hoggy or certainly eight or nine years older than him. So, uh, no, I mean, Hoggy, yeah, well, there you go, older again. So, like, no, look, Hoggy's big into his fitness. He's not a guy who's any interest in drink or anything. I mean, he just lives for hurling. Um, and I suppose the key difference there with Brendan Maher and, and Canning is they have their all Ireland medals. You know, Maher even has them at, you know, minor and under 20, 21, you know, and, and likewise with Canning. Hoggy doesn't have any of those, you know, he's not one at any of those levels. So, I mean, his motivation would be different to, to the lads he hasn't had the injuries they've had either um, yeah. and I still think he's hurling very well yeah. you know is he still for a show for an all-star probably won't get one this year if he doesn't deserve one but you know he's still a nomination probably and you know had some good games was terrific against Kilkenny in terms of the quality of the points he got and these two points in play were excellent to start you know when Cork was struggling in the first half uh, he just didn't get enough ball got fouled a few times at the end um, but no I don't see him going anywhere I would imagine Hoggy will, will play away at least 36 or 7 if his body allows him and if the management who were there want him um, and he's certainly good enough to start for Cork next year again that, that's the reality you know you, maybe that's a damning indictment of him but it's or of Cork hurling but I genuinely think he's one of the most gifted forwards the county's ever produced all Ireland medal or not and I don't think anything will change in that you know he's as good as the Joe Deans and Ben O'Connors you know he just doesn't have the medals they have but he's 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 a, he's a genius and, and you know the Cork public love him so they certainly don't want him going anywhere. And on Hannity, yeah, he's, he's playing well enough to be there. You know, again, maybe another 12 months, he mightn't be able to start every game. Maybe he'll become a guy who comes on for 20 minutes or comes on in the second half. But I mean, he was still motoring there, you know, in both the Kilkenny match and extra time. And today, you know, in the 65th minute, he was thundering onto the ball on the wing and, and driving on and trying to get another score, set up a goal. So, you know, these guys look after themselves so well. If you don't have the injuries, I think you can keep playing. I, you know, I think we're always keen to retire for this because, you know, we can look back in their careers and, you know, there's always, you know, fellas are always being shoved into retirement once they get to their late 20s. But I, I do think the lads are playing more than, you know, good enough hurling to be staying on, you know, and Cork need them to. After today, they need them to, you know.